Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show all of you how we can set up a animation for a pickaxe, a sword, or another tool inside of Godot when you basically only have a single frame for that tool. We can animate the position and the rotation inside of Godot and get a pretty okay looking animation without having to manually pixel every single frame. So first off, if you're going to be working in Godot 4 and you're going to be doing pixel art, make sure that in the project settings, so go to project and project settings that if you search for filter and then you go down to rendering textures that you have the default texture filter set to nearest from linear that way the pixels won't look distorted okay so if you've done that make sure that you bring in the art assets you want to use so i have a character generated from the modern interiors pack that has a swing animation and then in this gatherer exterior pack i have a pickaxe which i will go ahead and match the animation to the backpack guy's animation. So let's go ahead and set up the player's animation real quick. I'm gonna hit add a scene. I'm gonna go to 2D scene. I'll quickly rename this to be player, capitalizing the first letter. And then I will add a sprite 2D node to it. Also right click and add a animation player and an animation tree. So on the animation tree, you'll see a little exclamation mark. We need to assign the animation player and the inspector on the right hand side. So make sure you choose that animation player we just created. So to make the character show, we need to assign a texture to the sprite and the inspector. So I'm going to click on where it says empty for texture. I'm going to load, go into art. In this case, I have the file saved in modern interiors and here is the entire sprite sheet. So I'm going to double click that. So we obviously only want to show one frame at once. So I'm going to go down to region and I'm going to check enabled. And then we need to select which region we're trying to display. So in texture region, I'm going to change snap mode to grid snap. And I'm going to use 16 by 16. And this will make it easy to snap to the size of each frame of animation. So let's zoom in here and kind of find our swing animation. So let's go ahead and grab this first one and zoom in on the player. I'm going to do command or control S depending on your operating system. And then I'll go to the root. Let's create a new folder for our player. So I'm going to do new folder here and I'll do characters. Then I'll right click in here and do another folder for the player. And then we'll save player.tscn in this folder. So let's go down to animation player now and we'll create an animation here. So I'm just going to click here and do new. And I'm going to do swing. So the swing animation is 14 frames. And I want each frame to be 0.05 seconds. So I'm going to make 0.7 here. And then I'm going to do 0.05 for the snap. So that we can fit all 14 frames in. So now let's add a track to change the sprite here. I'm going to add track, property track. And then let's come up here to region rect, I believe. And let's insert a key. Click on that. And then you can see the X, Y values and the wh value so width and height is the size of our frames and then to move over one frame using this method we would just need to basically increment by this width amount so if i do 32 here it's going to move 32 pixels over to the right if i do 64 then likewise it's going to keep going now currently this animation is not playing so you don't see anything but let me undo that a couple times we'll make sure that this is the keyframe right there then let's come over here and let's make it 32 and then keyframe it over here we make it 64 so on and so forth so to kind of see this movement let's enable looping and also for this animation we don't want it to gradually change the value we want it to go straight to immediate changes so change this line from continuous to discrete and now we can hit play and you can see that now the frames are actually changing uh, toggle this off for looping make sure it's only in uh, normal looping we don't need it to go back and forth so if we hit play now it should go to the start and then continue so we just need to keep doing that for the rest of these frames so i'm going to insert a key and you can just do plus 32 and hit enter if you want to not have to do math in your head so let's go here and then increment it by 32 just keep doing this all the way until the end of your animation okay and we don't actually need that last one there at the end of it, it should just return to the start. So I'm going to change that to zero. But now let's go to zero and hit play. And there's our swinging animation on loop. Of course, there's other ways you can do that if you need to. So now we need to add our pickaxe tool in. So I'm going to right click on the player, 
add a child node. Let's add in a node 2D. I'll rename this to tool. And then that node 2D is going to need a texture. So let's add in a sprite 2D node as well. Where it says empty for texture, let's load our art. Go to wherever you have it stored. In this case, Chris Tutorials Gather Exterior Pack. And then let's use region enabled. And then go to texture region. And we can select the pickaxe or any other tool we want to use from here. So for Sprite 2D here, I'm going to take the transform and I'm going to double the scale for X and Y to fit this character better. Now we can click on the animation player and add a track, property track, and let's animate the tools position. So this time I'm going to be using the node 2D down here directly. It doesn't quite seem to work right when you try to use nested uh, sprites like that. So I'm going to animate the node 2D instead. So let's do position. And then add track, property track, tool, and rotation. So we'll go to frame zero here. I'll click on W. And then let's go here to the tool. I'm going to hold Alt down so I move the tool. And let's move this. And then I'll hit E to rotate it. And then we'll move it rotated to right about there. Let's move it again into the position of the hand. Okay, and that's where we'll set our first keyframe. So right click, right click. Let's go to the end here and we'll move it again a little back as our ending point. And as you can see now, it's going to animate both, but uh, we need to add more keyframes in. So when it's up there, right at the top, let's move it up here and then E to rotate. And let's make it kind of in a backwards position because he's about to swing. Then move it again, add the keyframes in. Okay. Now, if we go to frame zero and hit play, it's going to be a little closer, but not what we want. So further on, let's go to 0 0.5 when the swing is in its downwards position, move it, E to rotate it, and let's aim it downwards like that. And maybe it's rotated a little too much. So just kind of adjust it as you need. That looks good. So let's add the keys there. And we just need to keep creating in-betweens as well. So here it's way too rotated already. So I'm going to just move it. I'm going to hit E to rotate it. And then let's add our keyframes in. So let's go to frame zero and hit play. And already we can see it's a lot better, but obviously uh, we still need to work on it. Add more keyframes in and smooth out the animation. So I'll just go here to 0.55. Let's just keyframe it there. And then we need to move it further back. So I add a keyframe for the position, move it up a little bit, add a keyframe. Okay, and we hit play. And yeah, that's just basically the idea. We just keep going with this. I might keyframe every single frame since it only takes a second to match the character swing animation. So here it needs to be higher for sure. Let's add that in for a position. Then I'll keyframe the position over here as well. The more we do this, the more it looks like an actual swing. So right there, add a keyframe. And we can use the insert key to add the keyframes quicker. Or you can even do auto record if you want any changes to be automatically recorded. So if we click record here and I move it, then uh, the keyframe is already there. And if you have a rotation between two keyframes, you can change the position and then you can just let the rotation automatically go between the two keyframe points. So you don't need to necessarily change everything all the time. Here I might rotate it down a little bit though. Make it kind of more gradual. So let's hit play. And then let's just finish adjusting these keyframe points and here definitely need adjustment on the position so let's hit play and zoom out a bit and uh, yeah that's basically our swing animation so uh, what's cool about this is also because we are animating the node 2d if we change the sprite out let's just switch to a different frame here like this then you can keep the same swing animation or like this without actually um, recreating the entire animation. So basically for any tool that you want to use that same swing on, now all you need to do is change the sprite that's displaying and you're pretty much good to go. So it's kind of like a create once and now you can use any tool with that animation. So in a nutshell, that's pretty much all there is to it for how you can take a single frame sprite like a pickaxe, a sword, or an axe, whatever, and to turn it into a animation straight from within the Godot engine. And you can use that to match existing animations, as you can see here. So I hope all of you found this tutorial to be helpful. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching, and I will see all of you in my future Godot content.